Gail, thank you so much for coming back to host. Got to run with Will. I believe it's your fourth. Fourth time. And fourth I don't believe time. anybody's done more than four, so you're one of my top substitute hosts. I look forward to more. I'm very pleased. I'm going to do my best to do as many of these as possible. As you know, I recently did my 300th edition. Yes. Yes, we're very proud of you. Oh, thank you so much. The, uh, of course, the last two years of the pandemic has slowed us down a little bit. But Manhattan Neighborhood Network is going great guns. Mm -hmm. They're going to move by the end of the year to bigger and better quarters. Good. Perhaps the next time you're hosting, it would be down the near Hudson Yards. Good. I look forward to that. What is your takeaway from hosting versus being a guest? You know, it's almost one and the same because it's such a relaxed format that it's not an interviewee and an interviewer. It's two people talking about running. And what's more enjoyable than that? Okay, excellent. Now, we have a new book that you helped write the preface for. It's by the legendary and great Sid Howard, who God gave me what I needed, not, not what I what wanted. I wanted. <laughs> Although that's an old saying. It's been said many, many times before. But coming from Sid Howard, I believe is probably more of a superpower than anything else. Now, you wrote the preface. I didn't realize you knew him for over 40 years. Yes. So tell us, how did you first meet Sid? And, and then 40 years later, you get to write the preface. I did. I met Sid at a uh, national cross-country meet in New Jersey. And we both shared a friendship with Toshika D'Elia who was a very famous runner. She was the first female over 50 to break the three-hour marathon. And Toshika lived in my town, and we were best friends. And she took me to this cross-country event, uh, which our team won. And Sid was there. And Sid and Toshika were best friends. And she introduced me to Sid. And our friendship just took off from there. And then many years later, Sid and I were coaches at New York Roadrunners Team for Kids, which is their adult marathon team. I think Sid is still there with yes, Team he for is. Kids. Yes, he is. No way he's going to ever give that up. No. He's, he's and so he also good. coaches the seniors, which I get such a kick out of because Sid's in his 80s and he says, oh, I got to go teach the seniors. <laughs> oh, you know, he and his wife both do yes, that. Yes, they do. Asteria. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, I like that much better. It's very interesting. The seniors, many of them, they do it sitting down. They do. They, they, you know, they stretch their legs, their arms. They get a lot of them out of the chair and walking and running. They're great. I've seen the videos. Yeah, it's great. So something happened that said, decided in his late stage of life that he needed to write something down. And did he approach you he gathering did. his thoughts? He did. Uh, he wanted to capture his life. He wanted to leave a legacy for his many children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So he had a friend of his tape phone recordings. And then he called me and he handed over the phone recordings to turn into a book, which was a challenge. <laughs> because if you know and love Sid, you know the way he speaks. And it's not always quite in a sentence or follows a pattern or follows a, a rhythm. And that's the beauty of Sid. So it was a challenge to take the recordings and turn it into a book. So instead of just listening to the recordings, Sid and I had what we started to call our Sunday evening marathon phone calls. And we would talk. So I would do a chapter and I would send it to him to edit and correct. What did I miss? And then we would discuss it on Sunday nights. And a year later, we came up with the book. Wow, so it took a year. It did. But that's interesting, recordings, because as you know, recordings are very popular, especially among people that survive tragedies right. or, or great wars, and they're dying off, and before they, they go, they, they, they come to a studio, they come to a special place, mm -hmm. and they give an oral history. And so that, yes, and that's what this is. It's an oral history that we turned into a book of Sid's life. Now, is the oral history of what would also be available? At some point? No, that was just phone calls between Sid and his friend. And then 
he taped it and then they turned it into a manuscript. So that's what I was working off of and it was a challenge. Okay. Well, I think you met the challenge. It was a, um, a work of love. Um, I love Sid and I wanted to do anything I could for him and I knew that this project was very important to him. He mentions in his acknowledgement at some point that he has 19 grandchildren. And great-grandchildren. And another 19 great-grandchildren. Yes. Yeah, they're all over. Amazing. And a lot of them contributed to the book. So one of them designed the cover and his granddaughter would help him you know, if he needed something printed out. So the granddaughter, Tawana, was very helpful to both of us. Well, said the whole life seems to be a family affair. Uh, one of the chapters talks about his super fast delivery. Oh, yes. Pre-Amazon. Yeah, yeah. He sort of uh, anticipated what Amazon is doing now with their mm -hmm. trucks and bikes. Yeah, and, and he had deliveries. all his kids working. And, uh, and they were young. I mean, some of them are on a bicycle. And at, at the point um, after the summer when they all worked there, uh, they said, Dad, we're going to have a T-shirt that said we work for Dad and all we got was a T-shirt. <laughs> Wait a minute. It was a leather jacket. A leather jacket, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay. there's so, a lot of love in that family. So as you know, Stead is coming back on i Got to Run With Will. And I have a very, very special event planned for him. We're going to talk about his book with a very special host, Lance Swenson. He's a youth minister, and, and he inspired the Run Anyway okay. shirts that I wear because his story is uh, also one that's very spiritual. So I said, who would be the perfect person mm -hmm. to interview Sid about? Yeah. The guy gave me what I yes, needed, it's, not what I wanted. It is his life. And what better than someone that works with our young our youth ministers mm -hmm. Uh, land. So, when this interview comes out, it'll be after that, because we're interviewing before Sid comes on. So, is there a favorite part of the book or something that perhaps didn't make the book that's a, that's a personal favorite of yours about Sid? Sid told everything. I mean, he was, nothing was left on the table. He was very honest about his life. There's one chapter that's going to surprise a lot of people, people who thought they knew Sid in and out. There, there's a big surprise in the book. Okay. No, well, but it shocked even me. Really? Yeah. Well, on a shocking note, <laughs> thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I hope everyone enjoys that book as much as I did. We can't wait for the movie. Yes, it should be a movie. Too bad Sidney Poitier is not around. Ah, uh, there'll be somebody to play Sid. Maybe Sid will play Sid. There you go. This has been a Gotta Run With Will moment. 